Happy Little Games. Looking at arcade companies in the 1980s, there were two names at the top of the food chain that consistently created quality content and games that were just flat out fun to play. The first one is Konami with their Contra, Metal Gear, and Castlevania series. Other classics they released were Russian Attack, Gyrus, Track and Field, and the four player extravaganza Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The other big name that is right up there head to head is Capcom. They have released a number of huge titles including Strider, Ghosts and Goblins, Resident Evil, Final Fight, and of course Street Fighter 2. But the franchise we are talking about today stars a little blue robot who goes by the name of Mega Man or Rockman if you are in Japan. This character would take Japan and the rest of the world by storm with a series of games that are still going strong today. What is the sports game that Mega Man was involved in? What does Rock Superstars Guns N' Roses have to do with this series? So oil your joints and recharge your weapons because this is the history of Mega Man Part 1. The year is 1987 and Capcom designer Akira Kitamura is hard at work designing his next game. He had been working on a platformer in which a little blue robot has to defeat all the bosses and save the day. When Mr. Kitamura was creating the world for Mega Man and before he had figured out the gameplay system, Originally, there was no Mega Man, no Roll, and no Dr. Light. Cutman was the hero and he imagined a game where you would use the scissors on his head to cut down the enemies and other obstacles. The character wasn't always known as Mega Man though, as some of the preliminary titles for the game included Mighty Kid, Knuckle Kid, and Rainbow Battle Kid. Once Mega Man assimilates a Robot Master's power, he does change color. This could be why Capcom wanted to change the name to Rainbow Battle Kid. Capcom finally decided on Rockman with the rock being a reference to not only rock and roll, but also his sister who went by the name of Roll. Capcom Consumer Products President Joe Marici hated the name and eventually changed it to Mega Man. The pixel art was created by Mr. Kitamura with refined designs by Kiji Inafune. The influences for the character were Astro Boy, Kamen Rider, Cass Hand, and Ninja Captor. The character of Mega Man was initially going to be white. Mr. Kitamura had chosen the color blue because of the limited palette available. Out of the entire palette, there were more shades of blue than any other color, which resulted in much clearer animation. As I mentioned, Mega Man will assimilate the Robot Master's power after defeating him and change colors. According to Mr. Inafune, he felt it would be weird to have a blue character shoot red flames after absorbing Fireman's power. Speaking of animations, the development team decided to incorporate bits of anime into Mega Man's design. For example, when he uses his Mega Buster you can see the gun come out of his arm. They wanted to make sure this was animated in a nice, smooth, realistic manner. When designing his game, Mr. Kitamura had noticed a flaw in other people's game designs and realized after playtesting dozens of games that people would die too quickly at certain points and wanted to rectify that for this project. He was very conscious about enemy placement as well as how long it would take to complete the game. He did this by calculating how fast Mega Man walks through the levels. 
The enemies would start out easy but gradually get harder throughout the game. Mega Man's weapon of choice is his Mega Buster, which is a cannon strapped to his arm. The weapon is very effective and really knocks the enemies for a loop. This was the first game to allow a non-linear level select, allowing you to pick which level you start on. At the end of each stage is a boss master which you have to defeat to advance in the game. Once he is defeated, you will absorb his power and be able to use them throughout the rest of the game. The gameplay was inspired by Rock Paper Scissors with the project supervisor stating he wanted deep gameplay. The sound effects and music were created by Maname Matsumai in just three months. The original game was released in December 1987, but it did not sell well. However, it did sell enough to warrant an American localization and release. With that localization came the infamous box art. The president of Capcom USA had wanted the cover done by the next day, so one of the friends on the development team cranked this out in just six hours. The reason it looked so terrible is because he had never played the game or seen any of the source material. Everything from the color scheme to the landscape and finally Mega Man holding a regular pistol is just horrendous. The artist was told not to make it as cutesy as a Japanese art, so he went with a semi-realistic version. This terrible box art was believed to be the reason that the game sold poorly in the North American market. Mr. Kitamura had requested that a sequel be developed because he knew that the gameplay was solid. His bosses at Capcom agreed as long as he worked on other projects for them at the same time. Speaking of Mega Man 2 and its sequels, most of the bosses in their game were designed by the fans. Every year, Capcom would hold a contest for fans to submit their artwork and the best ones would then be put into the next game. While the first contest only garnered 8,700 submissions, by the time Mega Man 3 came out, there were over 50,000. The series turned out to be a massive success with over 50 games on various systems. Due to the massive success, the game would be licensed out to a number of companies. These would include everything from t-shirts, toys, manga, cartoons, and even Mega Man branded home pregnancy tests. After these messages, we'll be right back. So let's start our journey with the original Mega Man, which was released in December of 1987. As the story goes, it's the year 20XX, and Dr. Light has created a number of robots to assist mankind with industrial tasks. This includes Rock, alongside a housekeeping robot by the name of Roll, who is considered to be Rock's sister. One day, the six industrial robots go berserk and start destroying Monsteropolis. Dr. Light soon realizes it was his old rival, Dr. Wily, who turned his robots against everyone and is plotting to take over the world. His helper robot, Rock, sees what is happening and has offered to turn himself into a fighting robot to stop Dr. Light. Thus, Mega Man was born. The US version was a little bit different as far as the story goes, instead with Dr. Light and Dr. Wily co-creating Mega Man alongside the six android robots. Dr. Wily turns on Dr. Light and reprograms the six into taking over the world, creating the seven empires of Monsteropolis. You take on the role of Mega Man, which is a side-scrolling platformer in which you have to face various enemies to reach the boss or robot master of each stage. You have a fire button for your Mega Buster and also a jump button to get to those pesky, hard to reach places. As I mentioned, the unique aspect of this game is that you can select the level you want to start on. Your weapon of choice is your Mega Buster, 
which is a giant cannon that comes out of your arm. After you defeat the Robot Master, you assimilate his signature attack or special weapon, which can then be used for the rest of the game. The difference being the assimilated powers have limited ammunition, which have to be replenished by cells that are dropped at random by the enemies. Enemies can also drop cells that will replenish your energy. It is possible to play any level at your choosing, but certain enemies are more vulnerable to specific attacks which involves a bit of strategy. Once you defeat all six levels, a seventh level will open up in the center of the stage select screen. In this level, you have to traverse to Dr. Wily's Robot Factory, which is a chain of four stages linked together. The bosses you fight are Cut Man, Guts Man, Ice Man, Bomb Man, Fireman and Electman, which rumor has it, his costume was based on Wolverine. The final boss of the game is the Wily Machine 1. There is a point system in place, but it really doesn't do anything as there are no high score tables and you don't get any extras. This was later dropped in subsequent games. The game is very difficult as there is no password system, so you have to fight every boss every time once you start a new game. Speaking of the boss masters, the game was initially supposed to have 8, but wound up only having 6 due to memory constraints. The sequels would all be just a tad bit easier. The game is still fun to play though despite the small hitch, but greater things for Mega Man were yet to come. Mega Man 2 was released the following year in 1988. At the insistence of Capcom's higher ups, this game was to be developed in between the home port of Legendary Wings and professional baseball murder mystery, which the company felt these titles would be more profitable than another Mega Man. The story boils down to Dr. Wily making his evil return and you having to take down all of the new boss masters. The development time on this game was four months, and if you factor in sifting through 8,000 submissions for boss masters, it did not leave a whole lot of time for gameplay refinement. The higher ups felt that the difficulty was too advanced on the first game, and worked with the development team to make sure everything was more balanced. The controls were tightened up along with the introduction of energy tanks which completely refills your health bar. These can be found at certain points in the game. Even better, your character can hold up to four of these at any given time. There are a couple of unlockable tools for transportation such as levitating platforms and jet propelled sleds. The memory capacity of the cartridge was doubled which allowed a nice intro with excellent music and finally eight boss masters this time around. The backgrounds do not recycle as much so every level has a unique fresh look. The controls did stay the same but with the refinements to the gameplay, the game in my opinion is just more fun to play. The bosses that you encounter are Metal Man, Air Man, Bubble Man, Quick Man, Crash Man, Flash Man, Heat Man, and 
Woodman. The final boss of the game that you face after defeating all of the previous eight is Irian. The music was created by Takashi Tatishi and is still regarded as some of the greatest tunes ever created for a video game and it was created back in 1988. In the North American release, there is a difficulty select which does help out. The scoring system was also removed and a much needed password system was added. brought us the release of Mega Man 3. Mr. Kitamura had left Capcom and the rest of the team were reassigned to work on DuckTales, but that didn't stop the Blue Bomber train. Mega Man 2 was a bona fide success so another entry into the series was a given. In this one, Dr. Wily has seen the error of his ways and is now working with Dr. Light on a giant peacekeeping robot by the name of Gamma that would be powered by eight energy crystals scattered throughout the universe. The eight robot masters go bananas and refuse to give up the crystals. Mega Man and his faithful dog Rush travel to various planets to retrieve the crystals and save the day. Once again, we have similar gameplay to the previous entries Although Mega Man does have a new offensive maneuver which is the slide. This helps him slide under enemy attacks and also low-lying barricades. Just like previous entries, each robot master is weak to another special weapon. The robot bosses you encounter are Top Man, Hard Man, Sparkman, Gemini Man, Needle Man, Magnet Man, Shadow Man, and Snake Man. The final boss that you have to face is Gamma. Your faithful companion Rush is also there to help you with a variety of tasks, some of which will launch Mega Man into the air and being able to turn into a jet board that Mega Man can ride across large pits. This game introduced Mega Man's mysterious brother Proto Man. There is a glitch in the game that if you plug in a second controller and press right on the D-pad, Mega Man could jump the entire height of the screen. Very useful for trying to get out of endless pits. Once again, the difficulty has been adjusted and is just a little bit easier than the previous entry. The game looks fantastic with some of the best graphics on the series so far. One downside though is that there is a fair amount of slowdown, but at least the flickering has been kept to a minimum. This was the only Mega Man game to be featured in the Nintendo Play Choice 10 arcade unit. The game is essentially the same except that it does run on a timer just like every other title in the unit. Also that same year, a weird entry into the Mega Man franchise was introduced and that was Mega Man for MS-DOS. This was developed by High Tech Expressions who had previously released such classics as Barbie, Tom and Jerry, and Sesame Street 123, which I still play when I'm rusty on my numbers. So why wouldn't they be the perfect fit for this beloved series? For starters, there are only three boss masters to face, which are Sonic Man, Dynaman, and Volt Man. 
The gameplay is similar to the original Mega Man, but the controls are incredibly stiff and feel awful. While the graphics and colors are decent, the scrolling is not and really disrupts the gameplay. There is no music, but there is plenty of Queefaroo just for you. Considering only the PC speaker is supported, perhaps that's a good thing. The game itself is incredibly difficult with cheap deaths amundo. Thanks must be given that there are only five stages to get through. Especially when you consider the insane difficulty as well as the dodgy controls. Graphics from this game were ripped and used in Duke Nukem 1 for the PC. It's a horrendous first outing on the PC. In 1991, the very first portable version of Mega Man, not counting the Tiger LCD version, was released for the Game Boy. Titled Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, this game takes place after Mega Man 2 and once again, Dr. Wily is mad to the max and has created 8 new robot masters in an attempt to take Mega Man down. According to Mr. Inafune, this was the first game to be outsourced by Capcom, but thankfully, the developers were huge fans of the series and they did a great job bringing it to the small screen. The game uses recycled elements from Mega Man 1 and 2, with the select screen only offering four robot masters to choose from. The first four are from Mega Man 1 and include Elect Man, Fire Man, Ice Man, and Cut Man. After defeating these four bosses, you are given a carry, which is a temporary platform to transport Mega Man across large pits. After this, you are transported to Dr. Wily's Fortress Stage. This is a colossal stage where you have to defeat four new Robot Masters, all recycled from Mega Man 2, including Quick Man, Bubble Man, Flash Man, and Heat Man. After you defeat these bosses, you face the final Robot Master, which is Enker. Even though the Robot Masters are recycled from previous games, this is not a direct port of either Mega Man 1 or 2. It does borrow certain enemies from the games, but there are lots of new ones for this incarnation as well. All of the levels are new, and for a portable unit, they are quite diverse. The difficulty has been ramped up, but at least we have a password system this time around. Playability wise, it's pure Mega Man, only on a smaller scale. Released just a mere six months after the first Game Boy game, Mega Man 2 was released for the Game Boy. The game merges elements from Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3 to create a new experience. Personally, I could have done without this experience. As the story goes, Dr. Wily steals himself a time machine from a research lab to go back in time and change the past. Dr. Wily's luck is no better with time machines because this one can only go into the future and return right back to the present. Being the nefarious evil genius that he is, he does come back with a brand new robot by the name of Quint. He is convinced that Quint will do his bidding and take care of Mega Man once and for all. The four robot bosses that did not appear in Dr. Wily's Revenge show up as well as Top Man, Needle Man, Hard Man, and Magnet Man from Mega Man 3. One difference being that four of the bosses have their own stages with transporters in Dr. Wily's Fortress. Your dog Rush is available but only after beating the bosses who hold his power ups. A different developer was used this time around instead of the one on Dr. Wily's Revenge and it definitely shows. According to Mr. Inafune, the developer was not familiar with Mega Man at all. Everything about this game just seems a bit off from the level design to the stiff controls to the god awful music and screechy sound effects. 
This is one of the worst handheld Mega Man games, and needless to say, Capcom did not use this developer ever again. And that brings us to the end of the history of Mega Man Part 1. This is going to be a long series folks, so I hope you hang around to see all the various incarnations of our favorite Blue Bomber. While you're waiting for Part 2, if you've never tried Mega Man, it's definitely worth checking out. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. I appreciate all your support and thank you so much for watching.